30 years, the story of a journey. 1994 to 2000, challenging initial years. Passed by the Parliament under CIDB Act 520, Construction Industry Development Board or CIDB Malaysia was established on December 16, 1994 to lead the development of the Malaysian construction industry to greater heights. It was felt necessary to have a government body that should be established to coordinate the activities of the construction sector. The initial concern was in, in terms of relating to the small contractors and therefore the transition allowed the board to face the way in and provide some element of flexibility with regard to quality and standard for the first initial year or two years. And CIDB and I have several dialogues. I meet them, I tell them, this is the change we have to make. This is how we should do. We have to go throughout the world to see how the construction industry is surviving. The CIDB did a lot of work for that. Their, their service to the construction industry must be praised by people. The biggest challenge is to convince people. They look at Malaysia as a small country. I said, but geographically, we may be small, but mentally and also at the same time, experience and all that, Malaysia has got so much of experience in the construction industry. Why we came to the level? Because we have a lot of jobs to do. All these jobs must be followed and done to a requirement and also to a standard. As a significant catalyst of economic growth, the government had entrusted CIDB to develop the construction industry towards global competitiveness and to maximize its potential. The importance of construction industry in Malaysia has been there right from the first uh, government launch the first Malaysia plan and followed through until today. We get the approval from the cabinet eventually um, and with the condition we can only form CIDB provided that it is an off-budget agency. We started in 1992. It took me three years to put CIDB in place. So then came with the idea to introduce a levy on the construction contract. This is the beginning of very you know, tedious study how to implement levy. There were challenges in the collection of levy, especially to those contractors who did not price for levy in their contract. So they are the ones who refuse to pay levy and um, they are included for those that we should impose levy. Whatever they pay in the form of levy, they will get in return the training that they need in order to improve the image, in order to improve the product, of the industry. I came on board of CIDB from JKR in the late of 1994. That's where I began to assemble the basic team of the organization and we had to look for operating officers, convince the contractors. We had to improve the way they carry out the work. But the problem, this is the challenge, not many contractors appreciate this. The initial years was very challenging, especially when we first started our operation. Even though we were focusing on registration of contractors, but we had to register about 30 to 40,000 contractors. I remember we make mandatory for all contractors to be registered with CIDB. On the 19th of July, 1994, CIDB was swarmed by thousands and thousands of contractors who thought that by the next day, action would have been taken against them. So that's why they, was, uh, they were swarming CIDB's office until the main door broke. Besides levy collection, we also started to uh, register construction workers, though uh, voluntarily, but we were very aggressive and robust. 
thereafter. This new uh, establishment of uh, construction industry development or a single place you just come to CIDB, you can register yourself, whatever contract you want to do, you see. This is much a simpler way of uh, giving the uh, contractors uh, to perform their duties. To boost the industry's growth further, CIDB took a bold step to enhance its capacity and capability through various development programs which subsequently enable local construction companies and consultants to export their services in the international markets. 2001 to 2005, consolidating years. I would say the industry as a whole. Huh? I think the way I look at it is the initial stages were where it's about capacity building, you know, and therefore the emphasis is on human capital development, training, and things like that, and uh, you know, registration of uh, contractors, and these were the early part, you know, so that it becomes a better regulated industry. CIDB has been proactive in looking at this. In addition to that, I think uh, what they've done very well is the you know annual exhibition and so on that uh, that is being held, ICW. Uh, that one helps Malaysian companies uh, in their branding by being able to expose their capabilities and so on, uh, it actually helps to brand the Malaysian companies a lot better, you know, and that will be useful in their ventures overseas and so on. Uh, one of the remarkable achievements is in getting the CIPA done, you know, which actually has created a lot of certainty as far as the contractors are concerned in ensuring that, you know, payments for the work uh, is assured. The aggressive construction development programs resulted in positive outcome which not only benefited the industry's community but also the nation's economic well-being. 2006 to 2010, years of rapid development. Construction industry master plan has benefited the industry so much, especially uh, we are getting the capacity of the industry. There were seven strategic trusts and they were all related to efficiency and productivity of the industry. And along the way, there are things need to be improved like health and safety, covering current technology and also above all is to have the trust of the client. We have the value for money, Doing, following the specification and also timeliness of the project. From the nine plan around 100 billion a year, now I think the last three, four years, we are doing it for 150 billion a year. Secondly, regarding the quality, we have developed QLASIC, Quality Assurance System for Construction, whereby the score has better from 68%. Now, currently, majority of the project is around 70%. And thirdly, I would like to reiterate here, we have developed conflict resolution mechanism. Before, it was mainly arbitration. But now, with the addition of SIPA, and also the government has set up construction courts. This could help the industry to resolve any issue. We are intensifying our construction technology advancement initiatives in support of Malaysia's vision to become a high-income developed nation by 2020. This is achieved by capitalizing on our construction R&D, proactively promoting mechanization in construction including the use of industrialized building systems or IBS, skills enhancement and focusing on quality, safety and professionalism. 2011 till 2015, from strength to strength. To win more of the local jobs uh, and, and, and compete with those coming in, especially with the new uh, 
multilateral agreement like the TPP coming. Our companies must compete on level ground uh, with other players coming from it. So not losing our major works to uh, foreign uh, uh, construction companies. To assist, to give back, to organize the industry, to help the players. So everybody must come on board. We are, we are here for them. I feel that uh, if we are able to work with the industry to assist them through the plan, program under the CITP, we will get there somewhere. We came up with the construction industry transformation program that is in line with the 11 plan. And this plan is of course the last plan before we go into 2020. In fact, the government has announced in the last budget that they have committed 500 million ringgit to help the industry adopt IBS. The government also have announced that they will be reducing the tax on heavy machines that are required to be used in the, in the construction industry. So these are good incentives and these are good measures that should spur the industry to take this opportunity to improve the way they do their work. The competition actually should be good for us because it will make us better. To be better, you have to equip yourself with the right technology, for example, and the right standards and levels of quality and productivity. Another area that is very important is in the area of sustainability. Because if you want to compete internationally, you must be sustainable. And um, nowadays, uh, sustainability is even used as a trade barrier. If you do not produce products that are sustainable, and they, uh, other countries may not even want to buy. And if you want to participate in projects in many the more developed countries, they expect that your practice also will be sustainable. The work together is most important in construction industry transformation program. It is not an initiative of CIDB alone, neither is it the initiative of the construction industry alone. It is an initiative of the country and it is for the survival of the country because the construction industry has a big impact on the economy of the country. If this industry transforms and makes itself competitive, productive, sustainable, I think then we have a bright future forward. Partnering the Malaysian construction industry, which has consistently registered a strong growth, creating employment opportunities for approximately 1.2 million persons, as well as providing world-class infrastructure and amenities for the benefit of 30 million Malaysians. CIDB is obligated to continuously support the Malaysian construction industry to chart further unprecedented achievements. We are committed to build the industry's strength and resilience. Our construction sector has recorded growth of about 10.3% per year and is expected in 11 Malaysia plan, the construction sector will contribute uh, another double digit uh, growth uh, throughout uh, the 11 Malaysia plan. Uh, one area that we need to focus on is research and development, be it new material, new method, new system and this is where I think our construction industry players in particular have to adopt and adapt themselves into new technologies that is coming in. We have proven ourselves that we are capable. For example, Putrajaya is one thing. The iconic building that we have constructed, the Twin Tower, uh, we are able to plan, we are able to design, we are able to deliver. But one key area that we must look into is, number one, in terms of the safety, in terms of health, and also the sustainability of the environment that we really need to protect. So that image we must really take care. Only then we can export our services outside. Uh, we have to invest. Invest in research and development. Invest in new technologies. Invest in new systems. Only then what we have envisioned under the Construction Industry Transformation Program, the fourth trust, that is to bring our international uh, players to be international players. So we have to to improve all that. So there are four trusts that we, we are focusing on. Uh, so which was launched by our uh, Prime Minister. And this will be one of the KPI I have to achieve. So I believe by focusing on all this, right from the ministry, the agencies under our ministries, and all the other stakeholders, in particular, the industry players, if you subscribe to the Construction Industry Transformation Program, inshallah, I think Malaysia will be a great player in the world. Congratulations for your anniversary. You have done well. Keep up the good work. Uh, may 
Allah bless all of you for all the contribution that you have contributed to the nation, in particular the construction industry. Well done, congratulations. Staying strong for 20 years and beyond.